before you or I or any humans or any living beings walked on land, a mountain range formed on Pangaea. 11,500 years ago, people started living in the mountains in North America. In the year 1900, Benton McKay had the idea for a footpath all the way through the U.S. And 37 years later, the trail was completed. In recent times, every year, over 3,000 hikers attempt to walk from Springer Mountain, Georgia, to Mount Katahdin, Maine. Or vice versa, or in some order. And now, it's my turn to set out and see if I can complete a challenge that seemed out of my comfort zone and out of my reach until now. Man, so many feelings, so many thoughts, but just like, I'm so excited more than anything. Gonna be hard, but I can face it. My first steps on the AT. Oh my gosh. I'm doing it. Pretty easy so far. <laughs> Since my dad drove me to Springer Mountain, I had a hiking buddy to start out with. And a nice lunch. Off again. Walking to Maine. I don't know, Dad. It would just be so fun to go with you, road trip back up to Louisville. Nah, you won't. <laughs> you won't want to do that. Uh, okay, if you say so. The first creek crossing of the AT! We just passed the first shelter that's two miles after the road. I'm gonna go on down this way. I think I'm gonna go back. All right. right. Gotta get back. Later, skater. Yeah, see ya. Bye. Have a good time. You too. Drive safe. Bye. Bye. Just kidding. This was a huge life moment for me, so it was a little more than later, skater. I may have shed a happy tear. And because I don't bottle up my emotions and like to poke fun at myself at the same time, I'm going to keep a tally of how many times this trail brings me to tears. The first was on the way there. First time being really sweaty on the Appalachian Trail. Man, it's been kind of a hill this past part, but ever since my dad left, it's been like, you know, if you've ever been in like a race 5K or something and you train and, and stuff, I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> my brain isn't working. If you train and you do a certain time, but then in the actual race, you have a faster time. Um, just because you're in it and you're excited and your adrenaline's going. That's kind of like what I'm feeling today. I'm passing up a lot of people, honestly, that are through hiking too. At least they have big packs. But I pass people up and I think, oh, I don't know, maybe I should like chat with them, slow down, but I'm just raring to go. <laughs> This right here is the campsite at seven miles in. And at first I thought I was going to go for that, but I was going for that because the shelter seemed like it would be crowded. That's um, the shelter at eight miles. I thought that would be crowded, but I haven't really seen a whole lot of people today. I've passed maybe 10 people with backpacks on and for a while, since I've been on this part of the trail anyway, I haven't seen anyone. So I'm thinking I'll try my luck with the shelter. I think I'm going to sleep in my tent either way because I think I would sleep better in there. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. Oh 
Oh my goodness, my first AT campsite. Um, there is a lot of people here. My instinct was totally wrong. Feeling shy, but I'm going to set up my tent first so there's a nice buffer zone and then I'll make myself go be social. Well, that worked out really well. I just sat at a picnic table and talked to whoever came along. You know, good conversations, easy to meet people. And overall, I think today was one of my best days ever. Definitely the best day of 2023. But, you know, I was so happy and excited all day. Walking, I felt really strong and had a lot of energy and beautiful weather. And I'm really looking forward to the rest of the trail. I know it won't always be like this, of course, but just so happy to be here. Morning. nine in the morning and I'm already sweating. Just made it up a hill. I actually woke up and got out of camp pretty fast this morning because I heard people rustling around and then I was like, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get going. It was raining to start off, but then it stopped. And right now it's so foggy and looks so cool. And the sun is peeking out every now and then and the light is awesome. I said, to someone at the campsite man look at these trees how cool and they were like well just wait till you have to walk five hours in this rain and I was like I already have walked several days in the rain in my life before so I don't know I'm not saying that out of inexperience I'm saying it out of strategy you know it all mindset has a lot to do oh the Sun's coming out do you see the change in the light what a wonderland. Last night I didn't really sleep. Um, I kept waking up and turning over, listening to the rain some. I was a little sweaty last night actually, cause it was in the 60s apparently. And I was, I don't have any gear for cool nights. I just have my big sleeping bag and long sleeve shirt and pants. I'll figure it out though. That's what I'm really looking forward to. I have so much that I know already and so much to learn. It's an awesome place to be in. It makes me so excited to be here. Like this is our home for the next couple months. It's gonna be hard, but it's pretty. Made it to Woody Gap. And what is that over there? A bathroom. Living in the lap of luxury yet again. Today is continuing on being so darn good. Also, if you're wondering why I look like this, it's because I'm filming under a picnic table so you can hear me better because it's really windy. 
Anyway, I'm three miles from my campsite tonight, 3.3 miles, and it's only three o'clock. So, I could get there and it would be like 4.30 or I could just chill for a little bit. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have some snacks. Man, we're going so good so far. Then again, I guess it's only day two out of like over a hundred days, but you know. Oh my goodness, how nice was that? I stayed there for a whole hour and I don't think I've ever done that. But, no need to push more miles today. No need to get to camp early. Why not? I would get to camp closer to four for the next couple days after saying that. Other people get there early to get the best spots and hang out, so I wanted to do that too. Oh yeah, I forgot to say, I really am so, so, so glad that I trained by doing the Knobstone Trail. Plus the weather is just such a morale boost. Gives you some energy, like a plant. This seems like a pretty common problem on the AT in the bubble, you know, when a bunch of people start hiking at the same time, is that the campsites get crowded. So, right now we're just kind of squeezing people in. I was lucky that I got here when I did, I think, because I'm sure, you know, it's 540 right now, you know? Who knows who else is gonna show up and need somewhere to sleep. Because of the crowding, me and three other people set up our tents right in a row on what would normally be a path. What an evening. I had an absolutely terrible night's sleep. Oh my goodness. I dozed off. I remember having a dream. Uh, it was funny, the dream was that I was looking at a map of the AT and it went through Wyoming and Minnesota, which had moved to be near New York. But really, I woke up for a long time, couldn't get back to sleep. And then, because our tents were literally feet away, the person next to me woke up at 5.30, started getting ready. And I was so mad. In that moment when I was laying awake this morning, I was didn't sleep well, thinking about the next months of my life, my feet, my legs, and my back are gonna be hurting. I was like, man, I'm not sure I wanna do this. But I'm looking at it like I am buckled into the roller coaster. I've had seasonal jobs, wasn't really happy, and then had to just outlast. Living in my van was kinda just a phase of life where I had less conveniences and had to adapt a lot. So I'm just picturing this is just one of those type of experiences. A lot of it is going to be tough, but I'm just gonna outlast it. And now that I'm on the trail, I'm feeling pretty good. Well, I had my first potential incident of the trail. Just now I stopped to go to the bathroom and I was using, holding on to a vine for support. But I noticed, hey, this vine's kind of hairy feeling. Then I realized, well, no, it's not an animal, if that's what you're thinking. But you know what? Plant is known for having hairy vines poison ivy and I am very allergic. The thing that causes an allergic reaction is the oil on the leaves and since the leaves aren't out yet maybe the oil isn't active on the vines so I don't know. Today is all about climbing Blood Mountain, and then on the other side is Neil's Gap, 
where they have pizza. That's the big thing. Gotta keep pizza in mind. But people I've met along this trail are having a pretty hard time with this. Don't get me wrong, I am too. But thank goodness I did the stair stepper at the gym for hours at a time. And thank goodness I trained on the Knobstone Trail in Indiana because I, hills are tough, but they're not undoable. I think I already have a lot of endurance built up, you know? Not saying there won't be more to come that will totally take it out of me, but for now I think I'm doing all right. I'm walking uphill. I'm not even using my trekking poles because I'm filming, so. I said I was doing good and now I'm sitting down taking a break, so take everything I say with a grain of salt, but to update you on the PI situation, I think I'm feeling a little bit of itchiness around my left hip, because remember I was going to the bathroom when I touched that vine, so. Not the best situation to be in. As it turned out, I really didn't get poison ivy. The itchiness might just have been in my head or something. Very lucky on that. Beautiful first mountain of the trail. Got the lookout to myself for a little bit, so that was exciting. Now, let's go get some pizza. Views for 180 degrees, so beautiful. I'm almost down to Neo Gap. I am looking forward to pizza and maybe beer, but more importantly, even more than that, looking forward to going to the bathroom inside. After the simple pleasure of a flushable toilet, I got to take a look around. Mountain Crossings in Yale Gap is a reputable outfitter and a food resupply. Luckily though, I found all I needed in the hiker box, where hikers wanting to get rid of stuff can leave it for another hiker that could use it. Regrettably, I couldn't film that legendary pizza because I was charging everything, so I'll let it remain a legend here too. Even more than pizza and helpfulness though, Neil Gap might be best known as a place where 25% of through hiking hopefuls have decided to do something else with the next couple months of their life. They tie their carefully purchased, slightly worn hiking shoes together, throw them up in the tree, and say good riddance. Won't be needing those anymore. But me and my Solomons would go a bit further together. Feeling recharged from seeing familiar faces on the patio full of hikers, blood stuffed to the gills with pizza, I trudged my way up the next hill. My first three days on trail weren't easy, but they weren't impossible either. I was bracing for the worst so I would either be mentally prepared or pleasantly surprised. And what a pleasant surprise it was. 
As I came up to my campsite for the next night, it looked like everyone there was a man, was older than me, and they were already best friends. First, that wasn't even true. Second, a funny story happened that next morning, but I'll have to save that for next time.